Tutorial 3, the review assignment. We've opened a file called Timov and I've already saved it as Timov Family Budget. In the documentation sheet, please enter your name and then in the date area, we're going to use the equal today function to return the current date. Move to the Family Budget Worksheet and we're going to complete the family budget will start in row 18. So go to C18 and type JAN for January and press enter. Then return to that cell, use your fill handle, and fill across through the 12. That will be altering these cells to use January, February, March. In step 4, they ask us to calculate the couple's net income. You want to move to row 21, use your auto sum button to calculate the total for Sergey and Ava's wages. Use your fill handle to fill that across through December and then scroll down a bit to the total expenses. Here we want to total up the orange numbers including mortgage even though we don't have it filled in yet. So we'll use our sum button, we'll check to see that it's correct and press it again and then use your fill handle to fill over through December. Now that we have their income and their expenses, we can calculate the net cash flow. Net cash flow is the difference between income and expenses, or equal C21 minus C27. Then we'll use our fill handle to fill that formula across through December. Moving up to the top portion, here what we want to do is we want to calculate their year-end summary. So what is their total income for the year? So that's going to be a sum, equal sum, and open your paren. Now Sergey's income is in row 19. So we're going to highlight row 19, January through December, or equal sum, C19 through N19, close your paren, and press enter. What's great about this is that we don't have to calculate these individually. If we use our fill handle to fill down, the computer will do that summing for us. However, there's this nice formatting of the purple and the orange and the green, so I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to choose fill without formatting. Now we want to calculate monthly averages. So what's Sergey's monthly average income? Well shoot, that's easy. He makes $5,000 a month, so that's what the answer is going to be. But let's go ahead and calculate that. So we're going to do an equal average. We'll highlight row 19, or C19 through N19. And of course, as we predicted, his average income on a monthly basis is $5,000. We can use our fill handle to fill that down. Again, we don't want to lose our formatting, so we'll fill without formatting. Now you will have this division by zero error. The problem is, is that whenever you average, you're dividing. And since we don't have a number yet in our mortgage, we're trying to divide by zero, and that causes an error. We'll ignore it for now. We'll fix that shortly. Now your maximum is equal max. And again, we'll highlight Sergey's income for January through December. No surprise, it's 5000 a month. Fill it down. Fill without formatting and move on to column F. Equal min, what's the lowest number? Highlight row 19 or C19 through N19. Use your fill handle, fill that down, and then again fill without formatting. And if I click away, you'll see how that should look. Now we're going to have to deal with this mortgage issue. We have a mortgage plan 1 and a mortgage plan 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in a 1 for mortgage plan 1 or a 2 if we want this plan. But let's first get these filled out. Mortgage plan 1, they've been quoted a rate of 6.7%. That's an annual rate, which they will pay 12 monthly payments for. So our monthly rate would be equal to our annual rate, K2, divided by how many payments in a year, or K3. So their monthly rate is 0.56%. They're planning to take out a 30-year loan on this home, and the 
number of payment periods would be equal to 30 years, or K5, times 12 months, or K3. That turns out to be 360 payments that they'll make on this home. The home they're looking at is priced at $395,000. So that would be the principal, the amount of the loan. And now let's calculate for them what would the payment be. So we'll enter an equal minus PMT function, the payment function. And the rate for this is K4. That's the monthly rate, comma. The number of payment periods is 360, or K6 comma, and PV, or present value, is the amount of the loan, and that's K7. Now there are two optional arguments in the payment function, but we won't be using those today. Now we're going to do the same thing here for our mortgage plan too. Again, it is a 6.7% annual rate. Again, they'll make 12 monthly payments. Again, we'll divide the annual rate by the number of payments in a year, and that will give us our monthly rate, or 0.56%. This one, though, they're considering a 20-year loan, and so the total number of payments would be equal to the 20, or K13, times 12, and that turns out to be 240 payments. The principal in this one, though, is less. It's $300,000. So we'll enter that, and then let's calculate the payment. We start with equal minus PMT, open our paren. Our rate is in cell K12. Our number of payment periods is in K14, comma, and then our loan amount or present value is in K15. And press enter. So you see that we have a payment of around 2,500 here and about 2,200 there. A little bit of a difference. So now let's move down into our spreadsheet and let's put in the information for the payment. Well, we don't know for sure which one should we put in. Should we put in the 2500 for Plan 1 or the 2272 for Plan 2? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to write an if function. And that if function is going to ask a question. It's going to say, what's the number in E3? Is E3 equal to 1? If E3 is equal to 1, that means they're going to pick Mortgage Plan 1, which means they'll make the payment of 2548. If this says 2, then they'll use Mortgage Plan 2 and make the payment of 2272. So we have to write an if function to do that. Start out with equal if and open your paren. The test, the logical test is, is E3 equal to 1? In other words, are they using Mortgage Plan 1, comma? If that's true, then we're going to click on cell K8 because that's Mortgage Plan 1's payment comma. If it's not true, they're not using Mortgage Plan 1, then they must be using Mortgage Plan 2, in which case the payment's going to be drawn from K16. Close your paren. Now that'll work. That's going to give us the monthly payment. However, I hope to copy this across through the months. If I move my cursor into the E3 and press the F4 function key, I can turn on absolute cell references. Those dollar signs in there cause these cells not to be changed when I copy them, and I don't want them to change. So now when I copy this formula to the right, I'll go ahead and copy it all the way to December. If we analyze it, you'll see it's exactly the same as it was in the previous column. I don't want E3 to change to F3, because there is no mortgage plan number in that cell. I don't want K8 to to change to L8, because we're not even using column L for mortgage payments. So these have to stay absolute, and they are now. So right now, with Mortgage Plan 1, we're pulling a payment of 2548. The overall net cash flow for the year is $9,734. Let's see what happens if we change it to Mortgage Plan 2. So I'll type a 2 in this cell. Notice that with no Mortgage Plan 2, across the year we have a net cash flow of $13,000. So in Mortgage Plan 2, they have more cash flow. This should allow you to be able to answer question number 14 in your textbook.
It says in that question that Sergi and Ava want to maintain an average net cash flow of at least $1,000 per month. Is this achieved on either mortgage plan? Well, if we look at the overall, yes it is. It is achieved on mortgage plan too. This is the end of the video.